Hello everyone, Caddy Wampus Gamer here, bringing you another episode of Minecraft Awakening. Today's episode, we are going to be doing some Thaumcraft stuff. Alright, one of the first things that we are going to do is go to our Infusion Altar, and we are going to make something called an Urn. Now, there are two different types of Urns. There is the Ever Full Urn, and there's the Ever Burn Urn. Now, if we, were, if we were to look these up in the Thalmanomicon, we would see that the Ever Full Urn produces water. This requires nothing to produce water, it just produces it from nothing. Now, on the other hand, the Ever Burn Urn creates lava. It does need fuel, though. It needs Ignis Vis from an energized node. Alright, so if we look at the recipes, the ever full urn looks like this. You have to unlock this research first before you can actually make it. You're going to need three buckets of water, three bricks, and a flower pot. Now if we look at the ever burn urn, it's pretty much the same recipe except you use lava buckets instead of water. And I forgot the bricks, so let's run over and get those. Alright. So we'll just go like this. Oops. I want this here. Then we're going to go lava buckets here, here, and here. And I wanted the bricks over here. Let's see. Get rid of that one and get rid of this one. All right. Now I can pull out my staff because I don't have a wand handy. Oops. We forgot the flower pot in the center. Alright, so the goal of today's episode is show is to show how to set up infinite water, which you can use the reservoirs for that, but we're going to go the Thaumcraft route just because it looks cool. We're going to do infinite water and infinite lava. Now we are going to need an Ignis node, or a node with Ignis in it, in order to power the Everburn urn. I'm actually going to take this node here that I made, and I'm also going to show how to make nodes today. We're going to take that one. The reason we're taking that one was is because I created one for this episode, and then I looked at it and I was like, whoa, I created a hungry node. I am happy about that because those are like super rare. So now instead of having to run all around the world trying to find a hungry node, I can actually just use this one. All right, so this is done, and your empty buckets actually stay on the pedestals. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap these out for water buckets. And we're going to grab bricks and we're going to go here, here, and here. Alright, and then we're going to start it. And guess what? We forgot the flower pot again. Or I forgot the flower pot. Alright. Normally you would probably set this up a lot earlier on in game because I can generate like buckets of lava if I wanted to and just empty them out but this is just a cheap way to do it. I don't need lava for a whole lot. Uh -oh. A sudden and unnatural hunger consumes you. Now my armor will keep me from dying but let's see rotten flesh. If I eat rotten flesh my armor probably won't let me. Yeah, so let's take this armor off. Just because it does affect your color. Like, look at the difference in the color now. I do actually kind of like the colors are more vivid. Okay, let's... Yeah, see, you can't run around when you have the unnatural hunger. Like, this is sprinting. So right now I'm just trying to get a little bit more hungry so I can eat something. Normally, um, I could just wait... And after the four minutes or whatever, it would go ahead and be back to normal. But I want to hurry up and get rid of it because I can't run around and the colors look weird. I apologize for that happening. I just did some research, so that's probably what triggered it. So you actually have to eat either rotten flesh or zombie brains. You have to eat them four times, I think, because I get like hung or unnatural hunger four. So every time you eat one of those things, it goes down a level. Come on. There we go. And we're back to normal. Now we can throw our armor back on, and our hunger bar will go back up. 
All right, so we, we now have both of the urns, and then I'll go, sh I'll go ahead and show how to build a node. All right, if we grab the Thalmanomicon, we can look under the basic information and we can see something called node catalyzation. Now you're gonna have to research down this path and this path, I believe, to unlock this. Now it is a forbidden knowledge miner not a big deal and as stable as my infusion altar is there's not a problem it says by applying your knowledge of nodes and warded jars you have successfully devised a method of catalyze catalyzing the formation of new nodes by attuning a freshly crafted blank node matrix towards any combination of essentia to provide the seed for a node's growth you can then infuse it with a large amount of compatible vis to spark the node's growth all right, so you're going to use four Salus Mundus, four great wood logs, and a warded jar inside an Archaean workbench. It's going to take 20 Ordo and 20 Perdicio. That's going to give you this thing. This is an unattuned node matrix. All right, then what you can do is you can take it, like say you want a node, just an Ignis node. This is what I did. You just take eight vials of Ignis and put them around it. And that will give you an attuned node matrix ingots ignis. You know what? I'm just going to start over. Attuned node matrix ignis times eight. All right. Now over here, these are the six different aspects, and you can see the node has ordo times one, aqua times one, ignis times one, terra times one, perdicio times one, air times one. All right. Now if we were to take it and we go to the next page, you can see the one that has all of them, you're going to need 150 of each um, Essentia to pump into it. And you will get a node that has 15 of each aspect. All right, now if we take that node that had 8 in it, the 8 Ignis, we're going to need 1,200 fire aspect. And we're going to get an Ignis node with 120. Now the cool thing is you can actually do any type of node you want. So let's run over here real quick. Uh, let's see, if you wanted one with say Fames and Limus and Eider and Fabrico and Infernus and Instrumentum, you know, Examinus, you pick out eight different ones that you want, you put those around those unattuned node matrixes and you'll get an at atoned, attuned one that has those aspects in it, then you pump more of those aspects into it and you get a node with those types of aspects. Now, when the node is created, it can have, it can be different types of nodes. I didn't realize you could actually make a hungry one. Now I've gotten normal bright, normal pale, normal fading, normal unstable, I think. Did I get an unstable one? I can't remember. But anyway, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure, first of all, that you have enough of the aspects that you need. In this case, we need Ignis, and I can look, I got 10,000 Ignis. So I got plenty. Then you're gonna put the, the uh, attuned node matrix in the center. Oops, and I forgot my Salus Mundus. Let's see, Salus Mundus, we need two of those. One on each side like this. And then we can start it, and you can see it's gonna take 1,200. Now the reason I say you want to make sure you got it all in here, if you're not pumping the aspects into it, it will start to become more and more and more unstable. It'll start exploding stuff, blowing stuff off the pillars, creating flux all over the place. I figured that out a couple of episodes ago when my infusion went wrong. All right, so now what do we do? I have some extra Everburn urns that I made ahead of time, and I got a couple of Everfull urns. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna run over here, and I'm gonna use this area right here. Let's see, I'm gonna put a node transducer right here. I'm gonna put a node stabilizer there. I'm gonna put my node there. All right, and then, oops, I'm getting a lag spike. Then we're gonna wait a few seconds. Now, this should be decent for the Everburn urns once it gets stabilized. 
So then what we're going to do is we're going to take the Everburn urns and we're going to put them down right here, here, and here. Now, actually, you know what? I had a problem before when I was doing this, but I think it was because I stuck a pale node in here. Let's see. I'm really starting to get into the Thaumcraft, and I was talking to one of my subscribers about it. And I realized one of the reasons I never liked Thaumcraft. One of the reasons was that I had been playing with earlier versions. And the versions I remember playing on, if you went, you know, went around and you were like, ooh, I like this node, and you take it, that could throw everything in your whole world out of balance, just taking one node. All right, this has 11 Ignis. All right, that's a pretty decent sized node. All right, so it was like, you know, if you went around and took like, you know, 10 nodes out of one constricted area, like it could cause all sorts of really bad negative effects, cause flux and taint and whatever else. So that is one of the reasons. The other reason was I didn't like the research, but that's not a problem in this pack. All right, Everburn Urns, you put these down and if we look, you can see those little teeny embers. Not not these. The little magically looking ones. You can actually see them coming. Oops. Not out of there because they're full now. Let's put these down. I'm going to take Emmy fluid or Emmy import buses fluid. Put them here. Put these on here and I'm going to put acceleration upgrades, whoops, in here. Like this. Now, I did have some lava in my ME system. All right. So these should empty out. Okay, see the this orange stuff? That means it's actually pulling some Ignis out of here. I don't really want that, but I don't think there's a way to block it. I mean, technically, I can just get rid of these things, but I really like the design. All right. And for some reason, my Everburn urns are, like, glitching out when they're in my hand or in my inventory. That's strange. All right, so now this is pulling, or using the Ignis, pulling the Ignis and turning it into lava. Now I can take these ever full urns. Let's put these right here. And these just have these cool animations like this. So what we're gonna do is pop a couple of these import buses here. We're gonna go like this, acceleration and acceleration. And then we're going to need cable. All right, hook those up. They should come online in a second. Device is missing channel. Look away, look back. There we go, device online. All right, so let's run down here. That's still going. How far along is that? That's not even halfway done. Nodes take forever to create. And you can only use one um, infusion provider. I've already tried to use more. I mentioned that in another video. Yeah, it's not possible. All right. Let's go to the fluid terminal right here, and you can see lava. We got 839 buckets, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Yeah, we're generating a decent amount of lava. Wow, and I've already got 1,000 buckets of water, those things generate an insane amount of water. I don't think I had any water in my system. Wow. All right. Hmm. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. Nodes take quite a long time, like I said, to make. I wish you could accelerate those. All right. We set up infinite lava, infinite water, and we showed how to make nodes. I think that's going to do it for today's episode. So until next time, this is Caddy Wampus Gamer signing off.